Thank you, Pam. I, th I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyways, okay? Do you get, like, jazzed up for, you know, the, something that you know you're going to play, you know, today? You know, you, you have the hymn of the day, you have communion, you have the ending, and then you have your prelude and stuff. I mean, do you get, like, excited about, you know, a piece of music? Because to me, it sounded like that was a heck of a lot of fun to play. Yeah, right. Not that, you know, all pieces aren't equal, right? Mm -hmm. no. Some pieces you're just going, oh boy, you know, I can't wait to get through this one. But other pieces you're going, yes, I love this. Yeah. That sounded like, yes, I love this. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Thank you very, very much. All right, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, the ninth Sunday of Pentecost, after Pentecost, not of Pentecost, after. Pentecost has already happened. Holy Spirit has already come. That's a big deal. Um, and so we are now living in that time. Um, I don't know what number it is uh, since, you know, it started. It, it's, it's up in the thousands, tens of thousands after Pentecost. But we are living in this time. The Holy Spirit has come. And so hopefully our lives reflect that. And a uh, couple of things before we get started here is, is uh, just for those of you who may not have known, maybe didn't get the letter or, or uh, haven't heard, we did get approval for the air conditioning. And so uh, the air conditioning, actually they were here uh, on Monday uh, after the vote uh, that we had uh, on Sunday. They were here on Monday just getting started. There's a lot of prep work that has to be done. Um, a lot of things that way above, I don't know what's going on, but that they, they seem to, uh, are excited to do it. It's just going to take some time, uh, just even ordering uh, the, the air conditioning takes uh, a number of, number of weeks. And so we'll try to keep you up to date what, with what's going on so you know, um, but uh, um, we'll just try to keep you informed as best as we can as we know. And then Vacation Bible School, uh, my daughter has given it a thumbs up, and if my daughter does that, then it knows, you know, she's usually sort of my harshest critic, and, uh, um, but they've, uh, they've went through, my th th uh, three-year-old uh, grandson, and, and she gave it a, a good thumbs up, and so it is not too late, it is not too late to uh, participate in Vacation Bible School, um, the only thing that you have to do is come to the uh, church, give a LOD a call, give me a call. We'll get your supplies ready for you. Um, that's all you have to do. Uh, and so you, you could do it this week, you could do it next week. I think there is a, a limit of the last week in August is sort of like the, the end of a vacation Bible school. Um, and poor Missy, she, she not only got through vacation Bible school, and then there was a question about, well, what about Sunday school? Well, let us take a breath on that. Let's wait to a little further on and see what's happening with, with what the government is saying before we're ready to answer that question. But it is on our radar, trust me. You know, we're, we're, we're beginning to, you know, think about it, but we're just gonna wait. One thing we know about this virus is, uh, we can't plan too far ahead because it just continues to change uh, on a weekly or uh, pretty much on a weekly basis. All right, so uh, let's prepare our hearts and our minds and, and just uh, one thank uh, God for this beautiful, beautiful day and you know, hopefully for the coming week uh, of, of nice weather. Uh, I think your pastor has really turned into a fair weather pastor. Uh, not a big fan of the 90s, this is awesome. Uh, but every day is a great day uh, that we're able to participate in. So let's uh, calm our hearts and minds to re prepare ourselves to worship our Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, that's us. By the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Through him we have attained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Glorious, Glorious God, God, your, your generosity, generosity waters, waters the world with goodness, with goodness and you cover the creation with abundance. abundance. Awaken, Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and, spirit. and with this food fill all, all the starving world. world. Through, Through your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The reading of Psalm 145, verses 8, 9, 14 through 21. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all 
and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them your food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call up on you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. children and I, I hope you're enjoying uh, these days of summer here um, don't forget about our contest um, we have a contest going on and we we just uh, have received our first uh, entrance of that contest um, if you don't know what that contest is is you are to take some sidewalk chalk and decorate your driveway or or a square of the, side, uh, of the sidewalk. If you don't have a sidewalk, decorate the driveway, decorate your neighbor's driveway, uh, parking lot, whatever, be careful. Don't, don't get hit by any cars. Um, but uh, there is, a, uh, there is an, uh, a prize for first, second, and third. Uh, talk, you know, it was written in the letter, and so make sure your parents read that part and, and tell your parents, I want to be part of this. And so... Uh, you could either send it through to me or you can send it to Elodie and, and uh, we, we have a, a couple of entrants already. If, if, uh, they, if, no, if we don't get anyone else, well, they're going to be winners. So uh, come join us in that contest and you could decorate that sidewalk any way you want. All right. Um, gosh, I wish I paid attention in English class because there's, there's many different types of speech and I don't remember them all. But you know what? I'll tell you what. I tell you, there, there's, there's got to be some time in your life where you go, this is true, this is not. So, I mean, we, we got through the parables the last couple of weeks, and uh, parables are really not meant to be true. They're, they're meant to be examples of real-life activities. You know, a farmer sowing a field, uh, um, a person finding treasure in a, in, in a field, uh, a, a woman kneading bread and kneading yeast into it. And it's, you know, they happen in real life, uh, maybe not the treasure, but at least we can picture that. Uh, I remember back in, when I was young and, you know, was Treasure Island and stuff, there was maps with a big X in there. And, you know, we used to put, that, we used to play that. We drew a map and we put an X and we buried something in there. And then uh, my brothers and sisters had to go find it and stuff like that. 
Um, so you have to ask yourself, I mean, is this, are those real? They're, they're not meant to be real. They're meant to be, have a lesson to them. But today's reading, you could either go, well, that can't happen. And you're right, uh, it, it can't happen. I can't do this. People in here can't do this, do that, what you're going to hear today. But God can. And uh, God, through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, did a miracle. And uh, so he, he took a little bit of food and made it plentiful, and actually abundantly plentiful that there was so much left over that was unbelievable. And so we have to ask ourselves one day, maybe not yet, but maybe in the future, is this real? And this story is meant to be real. Maybe some people don't believe it, but it's, it's meant to be real. It meant to, it's meant to be a true story for us to believe that God is capable of doing anything and everything. And so listen to this story today uh, about what Jesus did, um, taking some food and making it abundantly. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these days of summer. I thank you for the play. I thank you for the fun family times. I thank you for just part of a little bit of laziness before we get back into a, a strange world of education this, this fall. So uh, I just ask that you continue to keep the, the young ones safe and healthy, keep the old ones safe and healthy, moms and dads and, and everyone else. Just, just continue to watch over them uh, and help them enjoy your creation, the beauty of these days. I ask this in your son, holy, uh, in holy and precious name. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he compassion. He had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to the heavens and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord our God. Oh, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. Oh, my goodness. It, it really has. Uh, the last couple of weeks has been sort of tough go for sermon writing. I, I don't know why it is, but I've been having some trouble writing the sermons. Um, last couple of weeks we spent on parables, and 
And sometimes those parables are sort of confusing. And this Sunday, this weekend, we have the feeding of the 5,000. And what makes this story sort of hard to preach on is that it's a very familiar story in our gospel, in our Bible. It's, it's the only story that's written in all four gospels. Plus, there's two other miraculous sto- uh, feeding stories also found in gospels. So in a sense, there's six of these stories written in the gospels. And I'll tell you, familiar stories are, are really sort of hard to preach. You ask any preacher and they'll talk to you about, oh, the Christmas story or Easter. They're really hard because it's the same story every year. And what, what more can be said about this? Because sometimes even with the familiarity that these, these readings, these stories come with, we like to also add things to the story. Where did the fish and the bread come from? And if we had a whole crowd of people in here, I'm sure I would hear, oh, of course, the little boy. Not in Matthew. Only in John is the little boy mentioned. Sometimes it's hard to keep an open mind to something that we have read or heard so many times. And it's also sometimes hard to glean anything new from these stories. So it's important today, if you read over that, that gospel reading one more time before, if you, especially in today's, uh, in the recording, that you read over Matthew. We're going to stay in Matthew's text today. We're not going to go off into the other t- uh, uh, gospel writers. And I think it's interesting in, in Matthew's text that it starts with the death of his cousin, John the Baptist. It says, Jesus, after hearing this news, removed himself from the daily activities of being human and being the Son of Man, Son of God, because he wanted to be by himself. And it's not hard to imagine that Jesus wanted to be alone, wanting time to grieve over the death of his cousin. But Jesus being alone usually doesn't last very long. Crowds are always following him, seeking him to fulfill their needs. And Jesus came down, or Jesus met them and said, and had compassion on them. And I think it's really, really important that you understand what that word means in the Greek. The Greek word for compassion literally means to have your gut turned. Jesus' compassion is not a heart thing. It's not a head thing. It reaches down to his gut, his bowels. It's a visceral thing. It's so much different than sympathy. Sympathy starts the same as compassion, I guess, but sympathy, I think, has really doesn't have the action involved. Simple, sympathy usually stays on the sidelines. You might feel this visceral thing, but it stays on the sidelines. There's there's no action. Jesus turns sympathy into compassion by acting on it. He switches from being a teacher of parables to a healer. It says in the Bible reading in Matthew, he has compassion for them and healed their sick. Still grieving, still hurting from the news of the death of of his cousin John, but instead of attending to his own needs, he attends to the needs of others. A friend of mine shared with me the three M's. He said, Tom, it's important that you remember the three M's, but it's also important that you remember the order of these three M's. Maker, mate, and ministry. God, our maker, is first in the list. He demands to be first. Love no other gods besides him. And I think it's for all of us, occasionally we need to do a self-check. Do we have, do I have gods that I need to, that you need to let go of? Work, money, the accumulation of more and more and more stuff because there may not be enough. 
Mate. How many times do we get this mixed up? Mate is second here on the list. And if you don't have a mate, that's okay. Just move to the next one on the list. The two shall become one in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. These are all precious words in that marriage ceremony. Do we need to reclaim our mate's position? And I know I do several times during the week, several times during the day. Ministry or vocation is the third. And some of you thought, well, I don't have to worry about that. I'm not a pastor. This is not only for pastors or reverends or priests, or it's not even only for the people who are on church committees. This is what we do. It could be involved in the church, sure, but it's also, it also could be going to work every day or taking care of the children. Any place or any opportunity you have a chance to share the love of God. And this is good stuff. It is really good stuff. But I firmly believe that this is where it should be. Below maker, below mate. And I wonder if you get this mixed up as much as I do. Oh, I am doing God's work. I hope that's true. But you know, for me, sometimes my ministry here at the church is my mate. And worse yet, sometimes it's my maker, my small G God. And in this story, Jesus' motive to act was his guts because they were turned. And let's make sure we have the right motive for whatever ministry or vocation we find ourselves in. Notice what didn't make the list? Me. Me is not part of the three M's. Oh my goodness, if, I, if I'm honest with myself, I am ashamed how many times me makes this list. I want to be like Jesus so bad. I want to feel compassionate like Jesus does. I want so badly to have this visceral feeling And then when I have this, I want to do what Jesus did. I want to act. Jesus had compassion on them and then got off the sidelines and started curing the sick. And how many times I wonder why my feet just simply do not move. How many times do I feel sympathy or empathy, but then I stop there? I guess these feelings are important, maybe even the start of this. But compassion, Jesus' compassion always involves action. But me, but me sometimes gets in the way. Maybe I worry that there will not be enough. Maybe I worry that they are not deserving, maybe not working hard enough like I am. Maybe they are not like me, look like me, talk like me, have the same faith like me. Maybe I don't want to hear their story or understand that maybe something else besides themselves are holding them back. I am so impressed by this church. Even during these times, we are still faithful in our giving. And your money not only goes to supporting this physical structure, but it also continues to reach out to, we use it to continue to reach out to our community with compassion. Jesus fed the 5,000. There were no qualifiers mentioned. They didn't have to show need If they were following Jesus, chances are they were not part of the in crowd. Jesus' compassion fell on all. Does this church do the same? And in most cases, we do. Because of your giving, we're able to give Hy-Vee gift cards. We're able to fill the blessing box with food donations. We are able to provide temporary housing. 
we were able to fill up gas tanks. A couple of weeks ago, I made a housing payment to a person I've never met and probably will never grace the doors of our church. I was curious, so I asked her, why did she call St. John's? And she said that her neighbor told her about St. John's. And, as, and when I heard that and I went, went back and walked to my car, I was floating. Because some days, I'll tell you, I am so glad that gravity works here on earth and I'm tethered to it because I would have floated away. I was so excited to be a pastor of this church. This church who is willing to help, willing to believe that housing is not a privilege, but a right for all people. That there is enough, not only for this much-needed air conditioner, but also to give shelter and food to people for whatever reason who do not have it. If this was a congregation of me's, this would never happen. I also thank you for all the people that are helping out at these services. You have seen a lot of the different readers, and if you want to help out with that, we'll show you. You don't have to know how to do it. We will show you. We got great teachers in Missy and Elodie. They will show you how to do it. And if you come to our parking lot services, maybe you will see new parking lot attendants this Sunday and new pushers of the cart. I was so happy I received a phone call this week from someone who said, Pastor, I would like to take this off your platter. Compassion, being moved by the needs and then acting on it. Okay, sounds like we have a perfect church, doesn't it? You know that that's not the case. You know that that's not true. You know that this church needs to, and the, the people in this congregation in this church, needs to continue to show compassion and even show more compassion than it does. Not only in our world, not only in our country, but in our neighborhoods also. Again, Jesus healed the sick and fed the crowd. No one was turned away. And I hope and pray we never become a congregation that limits our giving only to our members. I hope we can continue to find ways not to put me on our list of M's and that we open up our hearts and our guts to the needs of our brothers and sisters. If we do this, if we do this, we will continue to expand the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Let's take the time to enjoy our hymn of the day. Let us talents and tongues employ number 674.
Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness, that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation of St. John's such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend to your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, we give you thanks for those who celebrated a birthday this past week. We are grateful to be a part of their life and ask your continued blessing upon Karen Kaspersky, Kyle Van Duzer, Bruce Lamps, Callie Perra, Jacob Adams, Kathy Billard, Teresa Ellerbrock, Lisa Weber, Tanya Zolkowski, Michael Paremba, Rex Ringenberg, and Faith Siebert. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Living God, we also thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for blessing the wedding of Mark and Kathy Thiesfeld and Merle and Linda Walter. Please continue to instill in them the love for each other and love for you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us prepare your table at home while we go and prepare our table here at church.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with this church and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup, he blessed it, gave it to his disciples to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink.
May this body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Please receive God's blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen to that. God, the creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in his eternal love. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in our sending song, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. If you have a hymnal, it's on 843. If not, just let's listen to Sarah and Pam as they bless us with this music. You have been called. You have been gathered. Hopefully you've been equipped tonight or this morning. And now you are sent. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.